Good morning. Good morning, uh, Marriage Matters Facebook hmm. family. It looks grainy, don't it? It does. So oh. y'all forgive us. Uh, Facebook is doing some things. It's trying to make us switch to this live producer uh, version. Uh -huh. And uh, after a while, that's the only way it's going to go. So we've already had some difficulties this morning. Had to log off, log back in. So we're going to see how this goes. But we're going to do what we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm going to give uh, some people time to get in this morning. Get your coffee. And uh, sit back and just discuss marriage matters with us. This All morning. right. I wonder why it looks grainy. Do we we need some more light? It just looks like it's grainy. Yeah. So it's a lot of things going on here this morning. There's some stuff missing and all that good stuff. But like mm. I said, we we just gonna do what we do. I know we're gonna this have fun. morning and and go with it. Is it the first camera or the second one? Huh? Which one? Which one is on this camera or this one up here? Oh, the wrong one. Okay. That's why. That's why it looks green. We're gonna um. Yeah, we're gonna um. Uh... Okay. All right. <laughs> it's doing some different we're stuff this morning. Work. But even through all the challenges, it's it's not gonna stop the word of God getting through this morning going forth because this is uh, really a, a on time timely word <clears throat> this morning um just great and even if you sleep you can look at it later yes. i know some people will sleep because we were fighting with the alarm clock to get up <laughs> so i can imagine that's multiplied times a hundred with everybody else. Don't so people's a long clock's probably one this morning. So uh, what we will ask you to do though is also go to our YouTube channel, check it out, subscribe to it, like it, share mm -hmm. it. Um, the video from last week is uploaded. Yeah. So go on there and, and look at that and you know, just hopefully these videos are blessing you. We also uh, did a tribute to our 2020 seniors, yeah, and I did that post really that nice. video on there as well. Um, it was just something God laid on my heart to do, okay. and my wonderful husband edited things and made sure uh, the music was right. Oh, it was absolutely tips. fitting for for the video itself. So thank you, husband. Only gave a few tips. And your ideas about adding some of the other stuff. So but she really did that. She took the time um, to to really go into putting all of that together. Cause editing something takes a long time, especially when you're trying to get it to time with music. And you need the right material. It needs to be in the right sequence so that it can portray and convey the message that you wanted to uh, convey when you're looking at a slideshow. So, um, good morning. We are ready. I think we are getting into the eye-opening moment of a few sips of this coffee. So, <laughs> excuse me, we're definitely ready to get started and, and focus on how we can be better as we learn a few tips, strategies, skills that are not just being married, but it's also life skills. To learn how to read is a life skill. Mm -hmm. To learn how to read is a life skill. Okay. Yeah, to, 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 to do math is a life skill because every day you have to estimate. Every day you have to either count something. Mm -hmm. Every day you have to read something. So. This today, what we're going to learn today is a life skill. And we're going to talk about listening and love. So we're going to uh, open up and we're going to look at Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 19. But I want you to find it over there because I want to see how it sounds Okay. In the Good News Translation or and, the Good News Bible. And we're going to say good morning to our beautiful friend, Mrs. Nidra King. What's going on, Nidra? Good morning, honey. How you doing, Nidra? 
my hair has not been cut, I look like a lumberjack. I look like the man on the Bronny commercial. Oh, oh my goodness, I don't like it at all. Ooh, I don't, I don't like it. But, um, all right, so Proverbs it? 10 mm -hmm. and 19 says, Sin is not ended by multiplying words, but the prudent hold their tongues. That's right. I'm going to say that again. Sin is not ended by multiple words, but the prudent hold their tongue. That's right. The prudent hold their tongue. So we understand and we are knowledgeable of and have partaken in. We have experienced, we have um, executed uh, times when we didn't say kind words to each other mm -hmm. uh, because we wanted to get our point across. We wanted to be heard and we felt like both of us were right. And in all of that, we were both wrong and so i want to talk to you today about the act of listening and loving your spouse they work hand in hand just like breathing just like your heart beating just like you inhaling or exhaling we're going to talk about that so what we're going to do first is we're going to continue on with the scriptures and then we're going to go through and we're going to read this devotional from top to bottom. Okay. And then we're going to pull our key points on today's devotional, which really talks about the conversation between a husband and a wife and what takes place when there is a disagreement and how it should happen in the elements of God's word. So. Our next scripture is going to come from James chapter 1 and 19. All right. <clears throat> so 1 and verse 19 says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Quick to listen, slow to open up your mouth, and slow to get upset. If you do that, you will learn more about yourself, and you'll learn more about your spouse in that element of time that there is a disagreement. Mm -hmm. You will learn more about what is fitting, and you'll learn more about what should not be said in that space of time when you're quick to listen, slow to open your mouth to respond back, and slow to anger. Right. All right. So now we're going to uh, extend James, and we're going to go to James chapter 1 and verse number 22. Oh, we just read that one. We did 1 no. and 19? Okay, we did so. 19. So 22 says, do not merely listen to the word. And so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Do it. Be a doer. Don't be a shot caller. Be a doer. <laughs> you got to do both. Okay. So if we're going to hear it and internalize it, then we need to also, we need to do it. And then that, it shouldn't be like a one-time thing. And then you go back to the foolishness of, I, my way and no other way my way and the highway your way doesn't make sense your way sucks your way is not important you're in you know all of those type things if you're going to be a, a, an example then you shouldn't just ex execute that word just one time so you should be able to um, not only be a hearer of what we said in Proverbs 10 and 19 you shouldn't just be a hearer of that. James chapter 1 and 19, you should not just be a hearer of that. James chapter 1 and 22, you should not just be a hearer of that. But you should be a doer. Right. So now, we're going to transition into Ephesians 4 and verse number 29 and then the fun begins. Okay. Yes. 
And so let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 29. All right. And then we can dive into. Okay. And uh, I will try to also go back and put the scriptures back on here later. Try to do that before when we thought we were in and it kicked us right out. <clears throat> So Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. That's right. My questions are early this morning. I usually don't ask them this early. But right. this is just something to, some food for thought. It says, help building others up according to their needs, mm -hmm. that it may benefit those who listen. Mm -hmm. What if you don't know what your spouse's needs are? Yeah, then you won't understand what you need to do. I think that when you don't understand what a person's needs are, it's because you're not listening. You're not listening, so mm -hmm. you don't know them. Right. They are a stranger in their own home, and they've been with you all this time. You listen and you don't internalize anything. Therefore, when having a disagreement, mm -hmm. you revert back to whatever is comfortable because you are not listening and adhering and accepting the needs of the spouse okay. and okay. what they want or what they are trying to convey. Because at this point, when we start going through this, it's a series of things that we can do in order to understand how to be able to, to navigate a disagreement mm -hmm. with um, humility, with respect, with love, and with patience. Okay. Nobody has a disagreement and, and, and not have patience. But that, and I would correct myself. Some people do have disagreements and they don't exercise patience. Therefore, it only winds up in a downward spiral of, of uh, war or or negating peace. Mm -hmm. Therefore, everybody's walking around the house on the eggshells. Nobody will say anything. Yeah. And there's no... You get the, the disrespect, mm -hmm. the, the the malice, the... Mm -hmm. Just the... Ugh. And then yeah. there's no intimacy in that. I mean, there's no... There's no really friendship in that. Right. So, then you just... Well, we're married. Yeah, we're married. Good. Mm -hmm. Love the title. We're married. But you have no intimacy. You have no, no friendship. You know, you can't talk about anything, you know, because it winds up in an argument. Right. You know, because you don't really know the person. Mm -hmm. You don't really <clears throat> understand what their needs are. And just sometimes it's just, just to be heard. Right, it's not, right, right. It's not, it's not to argue. It's not to to debate a point. Mm -hmm. It might, they might be dead wrong. And they ain't ask you for right or wrong. Sometimes it's just that they wanted to be heard. Guess they want to get it off their chest. Just, and just they for somebody like, to listen to And them. they felt like with you, they could do that. And then they realized, we mm, can't do it. And, and one of the biggest promoters of, of marriage is to be able to be free with your spouse in your own marriage. If you can't be free to be yourself mm -hmm. in your own marriage with your spouse, that's a prison every day. Yeah. And so that's that's what we that's why we doing what we doing. You know, to help counsel that out. Yeah. So that you can be able to have conversations, talk, even in the difficult ones, mm -hmm. you work through them because they're necessary. You don't want to be stuck. I mean, if we were stuck in 1995 and it is 2020, we would not have a great marriage mm -mm. because we would not have grown. And there are some conversations that we have now that we definitely could not have had back then. Two personalities, strong personalities, and not wanting to back down. Right. Not wanting to relinquish any territory on what either one of us thought that's right. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a big deal. So we're going to talk about some things today and we're going to interrupt your living room, we're going to interrupt your breakfast, we're going to interrupt comfortableness to try to discuss some of these things. And then if we need to go back and refer to those scriptures, mm -hmm. we can always do that and then she will, uh, Melissa will put them. And you them. know what, we're going to interrupt the enemy's attack on these marriages. Yeah, Because it's time for that foolishness to stop. 
but you have to be uh, watchful to understand that you even under attack. Mm -hmm. How do you know when you're under attack? When you don't have any peace. All right. So, but that comes from spending time with the Father too, mm -hmm. because you have to get to know Him and learn Him mm -hmm. before you can get to know and learn your spouse. That's right. It's, it's, it's synonymous. You know, there are things that you can just be taught, and the wisdom that God gives is life. It's just it's, it's life building. Mm -hmm. And uh, and one one um, what do you say? One encounter with the Master can change it all. Yeah. And so. I'm going to read this. I'm going to take my time reading this. And I want you to kind of listen. And let some of these words kind of matriculate and kind of stick to you. Um, it's difficult to be quiet when we're eager to prove a point. It's hard to slow down and listen in the middle of a disagreement. Tensions rise and we lose self-control. Our relationship is broken under the weight of too many words. Mm. It's better to listen than to insist on being heard. Ask the Lord to give you hearts that seek to understand. Allow one another to freely share ideas and feelings. Um, and it also says that I'm just make sure. I, oh, it says give undivided attention without interruption or criticism. Take time to consider each other's point of view before presenting your own. Pursue unity above all. When you have an idea or concern to share, think before you speak. Choose your timing of words carefully to avoid offense. Speak the truth in love with gentleness and respect. Only say what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may be that it may benefit those who listen, which is Ephesians 4 and 29, and we just read that. Okay. Ask the Lord for humility to listen and learn from each other. Let his wisdom <clears throat> and love guide your conversation. Enjoy the closeness that will fill your marriage as you honor each other. So, we'll go back to the beginning and we're going to start breaking all of this down so that we can listen to some of the points that have been highlighted in this devotional. When you're eager to prove a point, you're anxious. And when you're anxious, you're in a hurry and you don't slow down and think things through. Okay. Due to anxiousness, instead of listening with, in, uh, well, I'll say instead of listening intentionally, you hear bits and pieces of a mixed message. Therefore, your response is what you already want to say back than what you heard coming in. Mm. So instead of allowing the plane to land, the plane is taken off. And so we we should take our time and we should build a platform in our marriage for communication. What it may look like for Millicent and myself, it may not look like the same for you. But there are some foundational pieces that should be there. One of them is to not be anxious, to listen and allow a person to share their idea. So, when it's a disagreement, we're eager to say what we wanted to do or what we want to get out. And let me just stop right now and say good morning again to Miss Nidra. Good morning, Miss Yolanda Hawkins West. And good morning, Miss Burgess Arthur, book writer. And so, we want to get our point across. Mm -hmm. So then we have tensions. There is uh, a current of, of of negativity or uneasiness in the air. Feelings are very high. Yeah. And then we allow for things to slide out of our mouths without guarding them against how they would um, how they would be perceived 
by a spouse. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, if you just release what is in without allowing God to tame and to prioritize what's inside so that it can go through a process before it leaves your tongue, mm -hmm. then you shoot out words of disrespect, you shoot out words of hurt, and you shoot out things that are not going to be easily forgiven right. because it's not the first time that you did that. Mm -hmm. You know, because we're trying to build a platform to be able to communicate and still have a disagreement and respect each other. Right. So, and that's the whole purpose of, you know, praying over the atmosphere of your home. You mm -hmm. hear us talk about that a lot, you know, but that <clears throat> when you constantly pray over the atmosphere of your home, that negates all that other stuff. You know, it, it creates more of an atmosphere of of freedom, more of an atmosphere of patience mm -hmm. and, and love where you can even get to that level to be able to start having those conversations, you know. And uh, Petrina, congratulations on you getting your book. She got her, she ordered and got her book in the mail. This is the one. All right. It's the one. This is what it is. This is life. In onion skin, <laughs> and it's not as quick and it's to the point. You know, you want to if you want to read a big novel, that's fine. That's not me, but this is like very quick and to the point, and it has it just have life in it. It says that um, it's better to listen than to insist. Hear me out now. It's better to listen mm -hmm. than to insist on being heard. Right. Be quiet, close your mouth, and allow one person to open theirs. Let them get out their complete thought mm -hmm. and the things that they would like to convey to you. And listen to what they are saying. Not hear it, not preparing about 10 different responses in your mind <laughs> that you want to already just like, I mean, you throwing shade like it's a, like it's at the beach and there's no tree. I mean, just shake. <laughs> so, um, you want to give a person time, you know, let them say what they want to say. But it's not right. It's not about being right. Mm -hmm. It's about allowing the person to get out their thoughts. Right. And it's about letting them be able to vent. Well, this and that. Excuse me. If they can't vent with you in the house, Mm -hmm. and have a little heated discussion out of love, then quite naturally, they're going to transfer that foolishness and that kind of behavior into other areas of their right. life. And if you are there as a support to them, then you should be able to listen to your spouse in the, in the home. And Jill, you know, I think part of it, too, is happens when we don't uh, feel like that their person's feelings a valid. Yeah. You know. So I, I can tell you how I feel about this situation or you when you did this it made me feel mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you know and then you're like that's not true. But you can't tell somebody how what it have ever happened made them feel. Mm -hmm. So that that just makes it worse. So we wanna not do that. Don't uh, make your partner feel like their their feelings are not true because their feelings are true to them. Mm, to them. You know, we have to take that into consideration. That's right. And then also, you know, if a person is telling you something, you know, the, the time is to, to listen intentionally and also just allow them the space to be able to say what they need to say to you. Mm -hmm. Now, it may not be in your eyes right. It may not be correct or whatever, but it is something that they want to communicate to you. If they feel like they can't communicate with you, they will shut down and they will communicate with someone else. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about insisting on listening rather than being heard, it, it gives you a time out. You know, and it gives you a, a it gives you a, I'm going to say it gives you a loving pause 
Mm. Because uh, okay. if you're going to love this person, love them enough to pause and free up your um, your heart to allow them to be able to convey a message to you. When you are close-minded, when you are standoffish, mm-hmm. when you have to be right, then you've already you've already lost. Yeah. Because it's not about that. It's really about just creating a space <clears throat> to be able to talk about something. So I'm gonna I'm gonna transition on to the next part. Okay. Because when it says allow one another to freely share ideas and feelings, just like Millicent said, you don't need to always say something, but I think I, I, I know that you need to validate somebody's feelings. Doesn't mean that you agree with it. Oh, you're just being too sensitive. <laughs> you know, you need to validate their feelings. Right. Because they're trying to tell you something. And a lot of times, and we said this before, and I'm going to say it again, don't respond until you respond with what they said. Now, I heard you say this, and then you say it. Mm -hmm. Let them agree that what you heard them say, they agree. Because at least then, you were listening, you repeated what they said, and now you can say something because I heard you say this. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to reconvey what they said. Right. That lets them know that you were listening. But it also gives mm-hmm. that person a chance to clarify. So if what they yeah. said was not what they intended for them to hear or it didn't come out the way they wanted, it gives them a chance to go back and revamp that. That's right. So that now you can proceed because now you can share your feelings. All right, here it come. Here it come. The biggest one that shipwrecks you all. And it shipwrecks us too. It says, give undivided attention. Excuse me. Give undivided attention without interruption or criticism. Mm. <laughs> That'll take another whole lesson to do that one. Give undivided attention without interruption or criticism. That's right. But I ask you what you just want to say about me. It's really about just trying to get out and say, what is in my heart? You you, you offended me right. when you said this. This is how this made me feel. I'm just I'm just trying to let you know. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, criticizing a person and talking about them because they're trying to let you know how they feel. Again, they shut down, and the things that they should tell you, they tell somebody else, and it might be somebody they shouldn't be telling. So you want to think about that. It says take time to consider each other's point of view before presenting your own. Take time Mm -hmm. to consider somebody else's point of view before presenting your own. Mm. You might not be able to say nothing that whole day. That whole time that you're having a conversation might just be the listening day for you. And you may have to come back the next day for the time when you are able to present your side. It might just be that you need to table that conversation after all the listening. And you can agree upon it. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're gonna can we can we stop today? I just wanna um I wanted to, to make sure we, we had a space for you to be able to speak your truth. Right. And it could because in a wise if a, if you're wise and you already know that you're starting to the, your ears are starting to blow up, then, then you know you need to go on and kind of cut the conversation down and just create a space for another time to talk about that because at least in this point, the person was able to say what they need to say. Your spouse is able to get it out. And if you feel like your nose, ears, eyes, chin is about to turn red, let it go for today and then go to something else. I don't know why she's laughing. I guess oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why she's laughing. So that's I'm laughing because that's been me. <laughs> and just think about that. It Ooh. says when you have an idea. It says when you have an idea or concern to share. When you have an idea or concern to share, think before you speak. Mm-hmm. All right. And I'm going to let y'all know, I think, ah, I think I just messed up, guys. Um, 
this this thing again is still cutting up so I so now I can't see anybody's comments Miss Charla I went back to reply to your comment and now I cannot get back that's to okay the screen so I can't see anybody's comments mm. anymore um it says a six up there you want to click on that six so it is really just you see that uh, right, there? right here no the other one the six comments right there you right think you click on that didn't work okay oh now it won't do anything it's here replying to charlie yeah but okay. now i can't get back to the other screen oh that's okay so it's it's we, really messing with us guys so if y'all post listen if y'all post questions or comments i promise y'all i'll go back after the broadcast and answer the questions i'm gonna see if i can log on on my phone maybe and see your comments we'll try it that way yeah and then she can still answer them. you see so, what happens okay when you have an idea or concern to share think before you speak look at all those comments there you go mm -hmm. bring it bring it and so when you think before you speak you are definitely telling yourself that you love your spouse because i'm pretty sure you think of all kind of crazy stuff to say we all do that but it doesn't mean that we have to um actually do that we talked about in james don't just be a hearer of the word be a doer that means right. actually do it don't just hear it when it says be uh self-control don't just do it in ephesians when it says be slow to speak mm -hmm. you know quick to listen and slow to anger don't, don't don't just be a hearer of that those are the things that you need to do right it says what are y'all gonna say all the time you gotta do the work you gotta do work yeah you got to do work. <laughs> so it says, choose your timing and words carefully to avoid offense. You can choose what you say. And when it is said, it may not it may not need to be said in that space. Today may be just listening day for you. Mm -hmm. It may just be listening day for you or for me. But then when you say something, the timing of it is the right time because you allow for God to anoint your tongue mm -hmm. to speak it in the timing in which it should be said. And not only that, but they go and work on your spouse's heart mm -hmm. so that it's not hardened to the words that come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. But the words that come out of your mouth are not harsh. They're not destructive. That's right. And that's where it comes to. Because the next one says, speak the truth in love with gentleness and respect. Yeah. Speak the truth in love with gentleness and respect. Mm -hmm. Not with words of this, that, cursing and slamming family members. And you always do this and you always do that. And I can't stand you. You make me sick. Get out of my face. All, right. that, all that foolishness. You know, but we know it exists because we have we just got personalities and everybody's not the same mm -hmm. but if you want a different response then you need to change the way you respond if you want a different type of reaction then you need to change your reaction if you want a better way in order to be able to do something then practice that over mm -hmm. and over and over again practice listening without speaking sometimes yeah. that's a habit <clears throat> if, if, if you build it it's and a we, habit when you don't listen and we can tell you personally, that's mm -hmm. hard. It's not easy to do. Mm -hmm. But if you ready, truly ready to move on to the next level, mm -hmm. then you do what you got to do by any means necessary. Whatever you have to do that's going to edify your marriage, make it better. It may be hard, but the more you practice it. The more you practice it. That's how you get there. So here comes, a, here comes another hard one. Here, here comes another... Here comes another uppercut. It says that only say what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Mm -hmm. Again, Millicent asked the question earlier. What if the person does not know what their spouse needs? Therein lies the problem. They do not listen. Therefore, they do not know. Therefore, there is a wall that extends all the way up past the heavens mm -hmm. between you and your spouse that the devil loves because he knows that you are talking to someone on the other side of, a, of the universe. 
even though they're right there next to you. Mm -hmm. Y'all are this close to each other, but there's a wall that has stopped intimacy. There's a wall that stopped communication. There's a wall that stopped real friendship, courtship, um, and, and has stifled the growth of the relationship. Therefore, the person wants out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be with you anymore. Yeah. I want to go on and do something else. You know, you 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 keeping me from growing, this, that, and the other. But nothing has been addressed because nothing has been changed. Mm -hmm. And then they think that they're going to go find that and they're going to do better with somebody else. No, you're going to go and get another divorce mm -hmm. somewhere else. What? Because when it's all said and done, everybody is a contributor to the relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, it ain't ever one-sided. It can't be because it's two different people. It can't be one-sided unless you don't have a mouth. So again, I'm going to say this is a year of responsibility and accountability. Take responsibility and accountability for your part in the marriage. Uh -huh. You know, that calls for a tough thing called self-evaluation. Reflection. That's it. They're both the same word. Self-evaluate and reflect. If you, for some reason, said some things that you should have not said, mm -hmm. then go and reflect. Go self-evaluate. Go think about what you did and what you said. Put yourself in the position of the spouse. How would I have received this if somebody had said this to me? Mm -hmm. This is what I said. Mm -hmm. But how would I have received this if it was coming to me? Right. I don't spew out this foolishness. But now I want to know how it is with me. So that's kind of the thing. Um, if you put yourself in the other person's position, then you can understand that they don't want to be talked to like mm -hmm. that. They don't want to be cut off. They want to be heard in in a, in a in a conversation or a disagreement. Right. They would like for somebody to be able to talk with them and give them some some words of, of, of encouragement. But they also want you not to always respond in the way that you respond. Mm -hmm. So, what if they don't want to communicate? Then then again, uh oh. Oh yeah, the grass is not always green on the other side. That's why mm -hmm. it's, that's why so many divorces and people think it's better with someone else. Yeah. yeah. And then you go in and you're with that someone else. You haven't understood what the family history is. Uh -huh. You haven't started praying against those things that you see. Right. The person right. don't really know how to do the same thing either. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you still, because when you marry them, you marry their family, you marry their habits and all that other stuff. Yeah. How do you deal with that? You deal with it through the word of God. Ain't no family perfect. You got the good. You got the bad. You got the indifferent. You got the ugly. But when you are building something uh, together, that's what you do. Now, right. Ms. Charlie said, what if they won't communicate? Then you pray for a heart to listen. Mm -hmm. And you watch God do what you may not be able to do in that space of time. What does that look like? It is a very patient and it is a very um, difficult process if you're wanting to communicate with somebody and they choose not to. Because one thing about the Word of God, is the, the, the most important is God will not force you to do anything. Mm -hmm. Because while you sitting there, He will go find somebody else to do it. Right. And so with the communication piece, you just want to pray for a heart that will listen. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, if the response is always to tell them about what they're doing, they waiting on that. So sometimes you just don't say anything. And that'll make them shut down even more. Because the expectation was, I'm ready for you. I already know what you're going to say. Mm -hmm. we'll come back with you with this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we've learned that. And even talking to just different friends is that, you know, even, even when we were, even like if we had a difficult situation with one of our kids, and we confided either in one of our parents, they would they would tell us stuff. That's one thing I can say, and I want to just personally, I just want to personally acknowledge both of my mamas, uh, uh, my mama and my other mama, because <laughs> her mom, my mom, they, you know, they really help us with their kids, and so sometimes, you know, they would tell us, and it's difficult not to not want to say something, right? But they say you don't talk to the aunt. And they would just call us back and don't did y'all say something? Don't say it. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. You just need to wait. I'm telling you. 
And so, you know, we learned through that, but it took a long time because sometimes we just go right back and just want to get you, get you, get you. So and that's so, when you have to make sure that you listen in the sound instruction. Yeah. And so we learned that that was also a part of communication, is that how we interact with them, and then they want to say their part. So as bad as we want to tell them the truth, you need to listen, mm -hmm. because they got their own way of interpreting things. Yeah. And then we can help them navigate through it. Mm -hmm. Give them a, a piece here, give them, right. a little, give them a little piece here, let them digest that, because they might not be able to take all that at one time. And I had to learn that she was more of the gift piece and piece and piece, and I was more of her, you can get all this. So I think that, you know, but we had parents to really help us with with the kids. Right. So you fast forward to now, and we're learning how to uh, expand that, mm -hmm. even with each other. We were sitting and talking um, a couple of days ago, and we were really just complimenting each other on being in a space yeah. where we could just yeah. talk to each other. And the comment was, there was a time when we couldn't do this. Mm -hmm. And that's really, that's growth because it takes a, it, it takes time, practice, um, you know, prayer and just really um, learning from prior mistakes right. about your spouse and also about God's wisdom on how to, you know, grow from something, right. heal from something. Because if a person is not healed from it, then it constantly becomes mm -hmm. like a scab that just never actually goes away. Right. The scar may be there, but the scab shows that it's healing. So the scar it's, don't mean that you keep bringing it up. Mm -hmm. The scar is, could be a reminder this is what you shouldn't do. You fall off a bike and you got the scar on your arm, you'll get back on the bike. But you know if you do this again, you can fall off again. So don't do that. You mm -hmm. know, and so it's the same thing with... Um, like with the communication right and so and i i just kind of want to go back and and address uh charlie's question as me, well. you know if they won't communicate the question is is it they won't communicate about a certain thing or is it just overall mm -hmm. if it's about a certain thing then that's when you go in your prayer closet, your call, your whatever your space is to just completely communicate with God with no interruption from anybody and you lift that area of your spouse up to God. Mm. And like Pastor Mike used to, what he always told us, call those things that be not as though they are. Mm -hmm. So that's when you have to start calling that thing out. What is that thing that they won't communicate about? Yeah. Or what is that thing that's stopping them from communicating like you would desire? Uh -huh. What is your response to how they won't communicate? Mm -hmm. Do you keep, well, we need to talk about this, mm -hmm. you know? Or are you like, okay, and just walk off? Well, guess what? Neither one of those are really a good response. Mm -hmm. Just, okay, I understand, you know, you'll talk to me about it when you're ready. And that's a hard thing to do, and I don't take you there from my own personal experience. That's a hard thing to do. But that's when you go to your father in prayer by yourself and let him handle it. Because he hears you. Just know that God hears the tears of your heart. Mm -hmm. And he not sleep. So to kind of recon, you know, so it's kind of re to re ring out. What she said, this last, uh, this last two or three sentences, and then the prayer that comes with it. It says, ask the Lord for humility to listen and learn from each other. Let his wisdom and love guide your conversation. Enjoy the closeness that will fill your marriage as you honor one another. That's a mouthful. This was a lot. You know, you need to go back and you know, we'll probably, we probably need to take a picture of this and post this so that for those that may not have this, oh, excuse me, you can be able to look at this particular one for today. Okay. Now, even though it's Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 19, we still had the other scriptures in here that we put with it. So, um, again, it says, ask the Lord for humility. That means you need to humble yourself, get out of your comfort zone. 
you know, listen, you know, with, with an intentive heart. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, and learn from each other. Because there's always something to learn from somebody else, especially the one that you say you love. Listen with wisdom and love. It says, let his wisdom and love um, guide your conversation. And then when you do that, you'll be able to enjoy the closeness uh, that will fill your marriage as you honor each other. Look at this. Mm -hmm. Read it. That's part, what is that, Proverbs chapter this what? This is Proverbs uh, chapter 10 and verse 21. Okay. So I can add this one? Mm -hmm. So Proverbs 10 and 21 says, The lips of the righteous nourish many, but fools die for lack of sense. Mm -hmm. Because if you constantly keep doing the same thing, you're just killing your marriage. That's the die for lack of sense. Mm -hmm. Because if you watch what you say, then you won't have that issue. If you watch how you communicate with your spouse, you won't have that issue. You know, we talked about different steps within this lesson. So we're definitely going to post this devotional page with mm -hmm. a lesson so you can go back and read it. Um, and Petrina came back and said that this is easy to say. You have to have patience for communication to manifest. Mm -hmm. And guess what? That's part of self-evaluation. Because if you know your patience is not the best. Mm. I would change my words from the thoughts of my head. If you know your patience is not the best, then that's when you have to go to God for yourself, about yourself. Mm -hmm. And then the thing is, you know, you know, how are you communicating? Mm -hmm. Are you communicating just with words? Are you, do you just, you know, do that? Mm -hmm. You could just do that. Just do that. You done did something you ain't supposed to do. You done said something. Sometimes the communication is just a holding of a hand. Mm -hmm. You know, that can convey a lot. Yeah. Because if the person don't even want you to touch them, you definitely know something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you don't touch me. Oh, <laughs> oh, don't touch me. Don't touch me. <laughs> so I can just understand that, you know, it's just, you know, that's another way to communicate, though. You pass by, you know the tension that I have, man. Just, mm -hmm. just, just keep on going. Hold your mouth. Don't, don't talk. But you know what? One, one thing I can definitely say that out of all the the disagreements that we've had or being upset with one another, one thing, and I noticed this when I was talking to a friend the other day, and I didn't realize, didn't really realize till I said it, is that even in those times, we never stopped doing what we were doing. Mm. So like if I get up and fix your breakfast and make your coffee before you go out there doing more, even if I was mad with you, mm -hmm. your lunch got fixed yeah. and the coffee was in the truck when you drove out of here. Mm -hmm. You know, even if he was ups even if he was upset with me, even, if he went in there and, and cooked and normally if she, fixed my plate. Even if she slammed the door in the truck after she put the coffee in the truck. <laughs> Your put coffee that, in there. Put that coffee in there. <laughs> Truck shaking like this. <laughs> but even if he was there with me and would normally fix my plate, he never stopped fixing my plate. So even in those things, you entitled to your feelings. Mm -hmm. But are you going to hold on to that or are you going to have that tough conversation and get it right? Because at the end of the day, that's the person you with. Would you rather, I'd rather reside with that person in mm. love and in peace and be able to lay my head down at night mm. in peace knowing that, you know, we have our thing, but we're going to get through it yeah. because God got us. So it's, it's no other, it ain't no other choice. And that's a mindset that we have to develop at all costs. Mm -hmm. You know, you stand cultivating God, your ground, your marriage is your ground. You stand cultivating God at all costs. Yeah, and it's just, it's just the practicing of what, what needs to be done. But I tell you what, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, <laughs> it's a lot of steps in here to get to a certain space. Um, this is the prayer that comes after all of what we discussed. Because with these, there's always, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see if I can, with these, there is always a prayer at the bottom so you know you can also use that as a basis of how you communicate with God 
on the issues that may be, you know, talked about in these different types of devotionals. It says, Lord, make us quick to listen and slow to speak. Give us your wisdom to communicate with love and respect. Keep us from harming our marriage through our words. Mm -hmm. That's enough. That's enough to talk to God about. It's a lot going on in there. And that's just the, that's just all you need. You don't need to go into some dissertation of a thousand billion words to say. Mm -hmm. This is enough right here. You know, to be able to start off a prayer about just give me the temperament not to respond in a negative way. Right. If you got to do breathing techniques before you say something, do that. At least they know you're trying to change the way you respond. Because when you change the way you respond, they can't be ready to respond in a certain way if you don't do what you always do. Mm -hmm. They got to read. They got to revamp. They got to go back and think. Well, he didn't say that. He would normally already say that. I already had prepared what I was going to say. I was ready for him. Mm -hmm. You know. So you know what that does? And it just I just had this vision in my head. You know, when somebody's riding a bike, mm -hmm. the wheel spins, <clears throat> and you take a stick and you throw it in that wheel, what's it going to do? It's going to stop. You're going to... So propel the devil off his bike. Yeah, stop the devil in his tracks. Throw it in there. By doing something that's God approved. Mm -hmm. You know, you do something that God says. He can change the atmosphere. He can eradicate right. uh, the walls and the things that would separate you. Uh, and then when you go back and look at it, when you really take the time and you go back and you evaluate the source of the disagreement was it worth sleeping on two sides of the bed was it worth not even sleeping in the same bed was it worth not communicating for two three four days was it worth the last word that had to be said before you slammed the door was it worth you being able to withhold sex or whatever it is that you feel like you would be doing mm -hmm. to get back. It wasn't worth all that when you go back and you evacuate something that you were um, having a disagreement over. It's just really, it, it really, you know, after you get to a certain point uh, and you think about things, you, you better understand that if you in this to win it, you're going to have to grow up. I mean, you definitely going to have to um, understand that when when God is trying to teach you something about yourself, it is for you to understand what he's teaching you so mm -hmm. that you can go through the process so that you don't have to go down that road again and be mm -hmm. wondering which direction should you go. You might have to do that with something else, but communicating with your spouse, if you learn how to do that with him, it won't be difficult to do that with her or with your with with your husband. Learning how to communicate with God requires you to sometimes not open your mouth. Learning to communicate with God is sometimes not being able to prove that you're right. Mm -hmm. Learning to communicate with God is sometimes being able to exercise patience over a long period of time and watching the process work even though you know you feel like your timetable should be faster. Right. Learning to communicate with God means that Sometimes you got to close out the ears of the un, uh, of the naysayers and all that outside white noise. Mm -hmm. That white noise is that hiss of the radio when the radio station goes off and is no longer on and it's just making that noise. You got to um, separate yourself from that noise. Right. So you can be able to hear from him. Um, so I am really going to finish up. I'm done. We're done, but I want to know, like, if you see anything that you all want to convey to us, you can say it through the um, through the chat, through the comments, because we're looking at them. Yeah. Um, so I may be a little behind, is you know, but hey, it seems like I'm starting to become queen of the workarounds. We are gonna mm -hmm. find a way to get it done. <laughs> Lee Jack, what's mm -hmm. going on, brother? So we're going to ask that you uh, please like the video, mm -hmm. love the video, share the video, you know, because again, like we always say, it's all about helping uh, building and foster 
healthier marriages. Mm -hmm. You know, um, reminding the devil that he is a liar. Reminding the devil that marriage was created, orchestrated, and designed by God. Mm -hmm. And that his word will prevail no matter what. That's right. And you will find yourself on the right side of good. So we're going to definitely post this. Uh, with the uh, video because it'll be uh, a way for you to go back and connect with this and just read it. It's uh, very powerful. It's 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 an easy read. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy to listen to read. Uh -huh. It's an easy read because mm -hmm. it's not that long. But these points in here, you know, they're all too familiar to uh, not being able to come to an agreement on something. Right. And you don't have to agree on everything. It's just the way in which you engage in that conversation, mm -hmm. you know. And then when you are sharing ideas, it, it's it's just allowing the space for people to be able to say what it is. Your idea may not be the most efficient way. It can be a way. Mm -hmm. But then when you're talking about marriage, money, finances, time, do what's efficient. And, you know, cost effective. If it's dealing with money, do what is what is necessary when it's regarding somebody's feelings uh, or their point of view. Mm. You know, those are things that we can practice. So, okay. maybe I'm I'm doing. Okay. I'm, I'm, so the last thing I'm I'm gonna ask again is to please mm. go to our YouTube channel, uh, subscribe to our channel, subscribe because we we really want to try to switch it and start live streaming from YouTube uh -huh. instead of Facebook, especially since they're going to be changing this. But you know, we always keep you updated on everything. So uh, just check it out. Just type in our name and it'll pop up and subscribe to our channel. Yeah. Share it with somebody you love. Share it out. And so uh, we will see you all next Saturday. Uh, we had to postpone our festivities for this Saturday because of the weather, but mm -hmm. we are really um, excited about our uh, 2020 uh, senior graduates this mm -hmm. year. Um, check out the video, which is also on our YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, and just congratulate and love on our kids. Um, I'm going to send out an invite for our, uh, plan, our drive through party. Uh -huh. for next Saturday. Yeah. So uh, we love you guys. Thank you for spending your Saturday morning with us. Thank you. And we will talk with you next Saturday morning right here at 8 o'clock with your coffee. And we will discuss more Marriage Matters because... Your, your marriage, marriage Matters. matters. All right. We'll see Bye. you later. Have a good one. Bye.